So today, I thought I'd kick things off a little differently. I'll take you through the design and manufacture of the Cam Spacer Infusion 360. I did this mainly for the sake of it, as a napkin sketch would have proved just as useful. Although, the benefit of using Fusion 360 is with the app on my phone, I can open the 2D drawing and the 3D model, and check the dimensions without needing any paper. So, I started by drawing a center line and roughly sketching out the shape of the spacer in 2D. From there, I would dimension the sketch after the fact. The cool thing about using the center line is that it will be dimensioned as a diameter and not a radius. This saves you dividing all of the dimensions by two. The next thing I did was use the revolve feature with the center line as my axis of rotation. From there, I could export the 3D model and turn it into an orthographic drawing with dimensions. This would be much more useful for when it comes time to manufacture the part on the lathe. I've also included a section view to show some of the hidden detail and because, well, it looks kind of cool. Before we get around to making the spacer, we have one very important job to do. So the mailman has come bearing gifts. And what do we have here? Ah uh, yes, some sort of certificate, it's qualified. It's even wrapped in a nice waxy paper. We have a Chinese precision level. So the plan is to use this on the lathe and yeah, we'll see how that goes. So you guessed it. I'm finally going to level my lathe with this $40 precision level. Now, this isn't really a how-to, more of a quick how I did it and a low-key review of my level. Now the plan was to use grout and raise the lathe about 25 mils off the floor, but I kind of got lazy. The lathe is jacked up on 8 12 mm bolts, and seeing as it only weighs around 300 kilos, I reckon this will be sweet until I get around to making some jacking pads. Once I'd calibrated the level, I realised I'd need to check my 1, 2, 3 blocks. This would be a perfect opportunity to get some use out of the new Michitoyo mic. It turns out they were within half a deviation on the mic, so approximately 5 microns. Absolutely perfect for setting up my small lathe in the shed. What I'm doing here is checking the calibration of the micrometer before measuring the gauge blocks. I'll be using the AEG hammer drill, and these are the anchors I will be using. You're probably asking yourself a couple of different questions like 
Why didn't he use chemset glue and thread abroad? And the answer to that is I'm a bit lazy and I'm a bit of a cheapskate. So we'll see how these do and hopefully they don't pull out of the floor. The first thing I did was level the bed widthways at each end to remove any twist. This wasn't too hard using minor adjustments and making sure everything was wiped clean. Once this was done I made sure it was level on each way lengthways before rechecking and adjusting widthways. So I'd call that a success, I've just measured this shaft and it measures 24.01 on each end. The spacer is made out of a random piece of 40mm steel. I turned it down to 33.8mm by taking off 1mm with each pass. This was done at around 700 RPM and once the OD was turned down, I then began turning down the shoulder for the cam sprocket to register on. The target diameter was 16.85mm, but ended up being more like 1682 So that's about 0.03mm, but let's just say close to a thou, because that sounds heaps better. And that is bang on the money. And why set the compound slide to 45 degrees when you can just do a sick freestyle chamfer? Once this was done, I drilled a 9mm hole and then I parted it off. It was a bit of a pain in the ass with the part off blade as it seemed to rub an awful lot regardless of the centre height, the RPM and so on. The best I could do was just slow it right down to a couple of hundred RPM and then it seemed to cut okay. And you heard it for yourself, that is the sound of a cheap insert rubbing. Now, if enough of you guys subscribe and like the content, YouTube will start paying me. And maybe, just maybe, we can up the ante and maximise productivity with some name brand tooling. This is the part where I contemplate using a four jaw chuck, but after using the dial indicator and checking the run out, it was only 0.05 millimeters. And like most things with this engine, I reckon she'll be right.
The next thing I did was drill a 16mm hole approximately 5mm deep. From there I bored the hole out to 16.85mm. I didn't manage to capture this on camera as I forgot to hit record. Once all of the lathe work was complete, I used the cam sprocket as a stencil of sorts to mark out the spacer. From there, I drilled all three holes to 5mm. The easiest way to hold the work was to remove the chuck from the lathe and use it as a vise. The holes were center punched and drilled through. I did end up needing to drill them out to 5.5mm though, as my stencil of sorts wasn't quite as accurate as I would have hoped. It was at this point I noticed both my good and bad camshaft weren't interchangeable. So I pressed the cam sprocket mount off of the camshaft, easy enough to get to the bearing. It is allegedly P6, it's a 6003, it is the exact same as this bearing on the other camshaft, the longer one. So worst case scenario is this bearing's in really good condition. I just pinch this bearing. Otherwise, in the meantime, price one of these up and see how that goes. And that's all for this week. Thanks for watching.